What's up guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. Here's my first video that I'm recording on YouTube. So hope you guys enjoy it and um, don't forget to like this video. Um, for this session, I decided to evaluate this infinite sum, um, the infinite sum of cosine of n over n. Um, at first, it may appear to be difficult, but we can do something with cosine in the numerator, and then maybe it would be easy to solve. Uh, okay, for the numerator, for getting rid of cosine, I decided to use uh, Euler's formula which states that e to the power of i times the n is equal to cosine of n plus i times the sine of n. Okay, mm. now e to the power of the i times the n is a complex number. And as you know, any complex number is consisted of two parts, real part and an imaginary part. So the imaginary part is sine of n and the real part is cosine of n. So now we can write something new. We can say real part of e to the power of i times the n is equal to cosine of n. So, now we found the replacement for cosine of n in our numerator. So we can plug this one instead of cosine of n. If we put this one here, we will get to, okay, our new, our new infinite sum will be like this. So I can bring this real notation out of my sigma so I can write down this like the new form which is this one. Okay, so um, it looks similar to something. And it looks familiar because it's actually the natural logarithm of Taylor series, Taylor series of natural natural logarithm, and we can write it. Okay, let me. We know that the Taylor series of minus ln of one minus x is equal to. the infinite sum of x to the power of n over n. So it's an identity. So if I plug, if I, yes, if I put e to the i instead of x in left hand side and right hand, right hand side, it will be no problem. So I do it. I plug x I plug e to the i instead of x. So I will get minus ln of 1 minus e to the i is equal to the infinite sum of e to the i times the n, e to the power of i times the n over n. So now I can take the real part of both sides. From both sides I can take the real part, then I will get the real part of this sigma, this infinite sum is equal to the real part of minus ln of 1 minus e to the i. Now this one which is exactly the same as this one is equal to the real part of minus ln of 1 minus e to the i. So now if we find the real part of this expression 
we found the real parts of this expression. So now we should work on this expression here and find its real part. For finding the real part, it's easy if we make, if we turn this expression to this form, which R and B are both variables, and um, then if we turn this expression into this form, we can easily find the real part, which is A, and we know the imaginary, we don't have an imaginary part, which is B. So let's do it. Because in it's now very um, complicated if you want to find the real part in this form because we don't have formation like we don't have our expression like this formation. So now we can do some tricks. So e to the i based on the Euler formulas is nothing but cosine of 1 plus i times the sine of 1, 1 radian I mean. Okay, I can plug this instead of e to the i, so I will get the real part of minus ln of 1 minus cosine of 1 minus i times the sine of 1. So, now, we can use trigonometric identities. One of them states that if, one of them states that 1 minus cosine of 1 is equal to 2 times the sine of 1 over 2 squared. It's very famous. So, now we can plug 2 times the sine of 1 over 2 squared instead of 1 minus cosine of 1. So, I will get new real part, the real part of minus ln of 2 times the sine of 1 over 2 squared minus the i times the sine of 1. So here's my new real part. So I'm going to clean the board and continue it. So, we got to this expression in the last part, so um, now we use another trigonometric identity which states that sine of 1 is equal to 2 times the sine of 1 over 2 times the cosine of 1 over 2, 1 over 2 radian. So, I can plug this one into here, same as last part we will get the real part of minus ln of 2 times the sine of 1 over 2 squared minus minus 2 times the i sine of 1 over 2 times cosine of 1 over 2. Now I can factorize um, sine of 1 over 2, 2 times the sine of 1 over 2 from expression we will get our real part of minus ln of 2 times the sine of 1 over 2 times the sine of 1 over 2 in the parentheses minus i times the cosine of 1 over 2 So, now I can, I can plug, I can multiply i and then divide i into both, into here, because it won't affect anything into this, into this expression, I will multiply i over i it will be 2 times the sine of 1 over 2 times, okay, if I multiply i into sine of 1 over 2, it will be i times the sine over sine of 1 over 2, and if I multiply i into i, it will be i squared, which i squared is nothing but minus 1 
So this minus and minus one will cancel out and we will get positive cosine of 1 over 2. Over I. It is getting amazing because now we can use logarithm rules and write it like this minus ln of 2 times the sine of 1 over 2 minus the ln because it was a multiplication between these terms so it will be a okay, bit minus ln of and let me write something this is nothing but e to the i e to the power of i over 2 based on Euler's formula if you plug i if you plug 1 over 2 instead of x in Euler's formula we will get this because it was Euler's formula cosine of x plus i times the sine of x if i plug x if I plug one, if I plug one over two instead of x, I will get e to the power of i over two is nothing but cosine of one over two plus i times the sine of one over two, which is exactly the same as this one. So I will write it like this: i over two over i, which I can then simplify this furthermore like this. It is nothing but ln of e to the power of i over 2 minus the ln of i. Just this expression. We don't have anything to do with this. And as you know, we can bring i over 2 behind of ln and it will be i over 2 times the ln of e which is 1 minus the ln of i which if i plug pi pi over 2 instead of x into the Euler's formula i will get e to the i times the pi over 2 is nothing but cosine of pi over 2 plus i times the sine of pi over 2 which cosine of pi over 2 is 0 and sine of pi over 2 is 1 which is equal to 1, which is equal to i, sorry. So I can write ln of i, and if I take ln of both sides, I will get, okay, i over, i, i times the pi over 2 is equal to ln of i. So I will plug i times the pi over 2 instead of here. So I will get this one. Let me write it here, the real part of minus ln of 2 times the sine of 1 over 2 minus okay minus the i over 2 plus minus i times the pi over 2 which I can factor factorize i from these two terms so I will get the real part of minus ln of 2 times the sine of 1 over 2 minus the i times pi over pi minus 1 over 2. So now it's a complex number which its an imaginary part is pi minus 1 over 2 and its real part is minus ln of 2 times the sine of 1 over 2 so let me clean the board and write the final answer for you guys so here's the last part guys don't be worried um, just a simple review from first we had this series then we got to this real part of this series which was equal to this and um, then it was equal to our real part of minus ln of 2 times the sine of 1 over 2 plus i times the pi minus 1 over 2 
uh, which did that, uh, which it's too simple to find the real part right now because here's the real part and here's the imaginary part because it has i as its coefficient so this will be removed and it will stay for us which the answer of this infinite sum is nothing but minus ln of 2 times the sine of 1 over 2 that's it guys hope you enjoyed this video